In the previous video, we learned about the elementary row operations and we learned how we can use them to solve systems of equations. But it turns out systems of equations have way too much fluff in them. And so to make the algorithm more efficient, we should become more efficient in our notation itself. And so for this reason, we're gonna introduce the augmented matrix. Well, what is a matrix? It's, it's I, I'm not talking about red pill or blue pill or anything like that. Um, a matrix is a rectangular array of numbers. If we have two positive integers, M and N, we say an M by N matrix is a rectangular array with M rows and N columns. Be aware that when we talk about matrices, we always first mention the rows and then we mention the columns. This is reverse alphabetical order. An M by N matrix means there are M rows and N columns. So for example, the following matrix, one, two, three is the first row, five, zero, negative three is the second row. There are two rows, three columns. We see two rows right here, and we see three columns right here. So we call this a two by three matrix. That's all there is to a matrix. It's a rectangular array of numbers. Much like a vector is like a linear array, uh, a, 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 a matrix could have multiple rows, multiple columns. Of course, every vector we've talked about is an example of a matrix, right? If you have the vector one, two, three, this is just an example of a three by one matrix. The vectors we've introduced are really just one column matrices. Um, so continuing with that, the reason we're introducing matrices now is that we wanna talk about the coefficient and augmented matrix of a system of equations. So if you have a linear system, much like this example we were playing with in the previous video, we have this linear system of equations. If you organize things correctly, you're gonna put all of the variables lined up into columns. So there's a column for x1, there's a column for x2, there's a column for x3, and make sure all of the constant terms are on the right-hand side of the equations. Using this, we can then construct what we call the coefficient matrix. The coefficient matrix then keeps track of all of the coefficients of the variables in the linear system. Let me explain. So if you look at the variable x1, the first column of the coefficient matrix will be the coefficients of, the, of x1 in the system. So you don't see inf anything in front of x1 in the first one. That's because its coefficient is a 1. So we record a 1 in the matrix in the first row. In the second equation, you don't even see an x1. And that's because its coefficient is a 0. So we put a 0 in to the second position there. And then the third row, the third equation, the coefficient's negative four, so we record that in the matrix. The first column corresponds to x1. The second column will correspond to x2. Since you have a minus two x2, make sure you put a minus sign right here. Don't forget the negative sign. Because you have a plus two x2, you'll put a two in the second row. And then a six x2 puts a six in the third row. And then finally, the third column will correspond to x three. The first equation has a two x three, so you put a two in the first row. The second equation has a negative eight x three, so you put a negative eight in the, third, in the second row. And then the third equation has a two as the coefficient, so you record the coefficient of two in the third row, third column. All right. And I should mention that when you have an entry in a matrix, you always refer to the position. So this right here, you always refer to the row, then the column. So this is the one, three entry of the matrix. First row, third column. Uh, this right here is the three, two entry of the matrix. Third row, second column. So we can reference the address of an entry. This is the coefficient matrix. It just keeps track of the coefficients of the variables here. The augmented matrix, what you do to create it is you take the coefficient matrix, so this is just the coefficient matrix we had right here, but then you augment one extra column, the last column. This will correspond to the right-hand side of the system of equations. So when you look at this friend right here, you take just the entries in the same order, 0, negative 8, 10, and this then becomes this augmented column. We just we 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 can we put another column at the end there. Um, we also like to add this vertical line to separate the coefficient matrix from this augmented column. And this vertical line, we associate to the location of the equal signs. And so this matrix right here, this augmented matrix, is just an encoding of the linear system of equations. This matrix 
encodes all the information we need. There's a column for the first variable, second variable, third variable. We know where the equal sign is. And then each row gives us an equation. We have all the information we actually need encoded in this system of equations. We could unravel it to solve the system of equations if we so chose to. Now let me show you an example. Let's take another system of equations. It's another three by three example right here. Let's construct the augmented matrix. Looking at the first row, the first row would be 0, 3, 3, 11. The second row would be 2, negative 3, 3, negative 4. And then the final row would be 1, 1, 4, 3. Now make sure your variables are in the right order. If someone like, you know, tricked you and did x2 plus x1 plus 4x3, you do need to, you do need to put them in the right order. Uh, so watch out for that diabolical, you know, it's like a leprechaun trick or something like that. So we get right here, the augmented matrix. It has all of the information we need for the system of equations. What if we were to start playing around with this augmented matrix? For example, what if we wanted to perform the elementary row operation of interchange? What if we interchange rows? Uh, I'm actually gonna interchange rows one and three. The first becomes the last and the last becomes the first. If you interchange the rows, you end up with a matrix like the following. And then the next thing I wanna do after interchange is I'm going to take the second row and subtract from it two times the first row. And using the convention we did before, we're gonna times the first row by negative two. This gives us a negative two, a negative two, a negative eight, and a negative 12 right there. Adding those entries together, you're gonna to get zero, negative five, negative five, and negative, uh, negative, did I do that one last? That, oh, I'm sorry, I did. Where did that come from? I did a negative, negative 12, I did. I did three times four. I needed to do three times negative two. Sorry about that, that gaff right there. Three, time, uh, three times negative two is negative six, and then negative six plus negative four is negative 10. Uh, so you, just, you wanna make sure you check your arithmetic here. So we get zero, negative five, negative five, and negative 10. It's reasons like this, you don't wanna do too much of the arithmetic in your head. It can be very difficult to do. Um, at this stage, right, I'm looking at the second row, I'm gonna multiply everything in the second row by negative one fifth. That is, I'm gonna do the scaling operation. And so you divide everything by negative five, the second row will become zero, one, one, two. And then at that moment, I'm gonna do another replacement operation. I'm going to take row three and subtract from it three times row two. That's what I wanna do. Again, don't worry so much on why I'm doing things what I'm doing, focus right now on what I'm doing. So we're gonna take one times negative three, which is negative three. We're gonna take one times negative three, we did that one. Two times negative three, I'm gonna get this one right this time, it's a negative six. You'll, know, you'll notice I ignored this column right here because zero plus negative three times zero is gonna be zero. It's not gonna change because of the zeros there. Um, and so what happens is you're gonna get three minus three, which is zero. You're gonna get three minus three, which is zero. And you're gonna get 11 minus six, which is five. And so this is our matrix right here. Notice again, it's like, uh-huh, I see those stairs of zeros you made right there. Ah, I see that's why you did it. it now this, this augmented matrix represents a system of equations. If we switch it back to the associated linear system, you see the following. The first equation, which is now gonna be x1 plus x2 plus four x3 equals three. The second equation is gonna be x2 plus x3 equals two. And the third equation is gonna be zero equals five. This system of equations is equivalent to the one we started with. They're not equal, but they're equivalent. This is the same, this, this system will have the same solution that the original system had. But look at that last equation, zero equals five. This is what we call a contradiction, it's impossible. There's no choice of x1, x2, and x3 that'll force the, the equation zero equal five to be true. I mean, if we're working mod five, then this would be fine. In Z5, this would be perfectly fine, but we're working over the real numbers. If ever you have a linear, a linear system and it doesn't specify the field, you may assume the field is R, the field of real numbers. So this is impossible to do. Zero does not equal five over the real numbers. And since it's impossible to solve this system, that means there's no solution. This is what we previously called inconsistent. So when we represent a system of equations as a matrix, as an augmented matrix, we are more efficient in our notation and we can combine that with the row operations we had before. This is actually why they're called the elementary row operations. We are doing operations to the rows of the augmented matrix. So combining the augmented matrix with the elementary row operations, we now have the tools 
necessary to start, start solving systems of equations. But to compare ourselves to the Karate Kid, right now we've learned wax on, wax off. Daniel-san has learned, he's learning just the muscle memory of the karate moves he needs to know uh, from Mr. Miyagi, right? We haven't yet applied, we're just practicing the skills, we yet don't have the strategy. That'll come in the next section.